Hi, very good afternoon, friend. Um, on behalf of CMS Vatavaran, I welcome you all. Um, as you may be aware that uh, since lockdown that started in March 20, uh, Mar in the month of March, we are doing a series of innovative programs to engage the people. Uh, and uh, in this series, we had done a, a, a webinar series on the green filmmaking. And today we are uh, and then, uh, going to uh, discuss about ethics and morality in the environmental and wildlife filmmaking. Uh, but before uh, going to the webinar and introducing to the panelists, let me uh, tell you a little about what uh, CMS age and what work we are doing after uh, since lockdown. So CMS uh, Vatavaran is Asia's one of the biggest environmental film festival and forum. Uh, and uh, since 2002, we are doing a um, internet uh, film festivals and organizing forums. Uh, and uh, we are using films as a tool uh, f uh, for uh, uh, enlightenment about uh, the environmental and wildlife issues. Uh, since lockdown, we had done, a, uh, as I told you earlier, we had done a series of programs, including three minute uh, uh, online film competition on biodiversity, uh, uh, essay writing, comp online essay writing competition. Um, uh, we uh, actually, we are one of the first uh, film festivals who had using this uh, online tool uh, since uh, COVID pandemic uh, to use uh, it in the on uh, and organizing online film festivals. We had organized a series of online film festivals, and I'm very happy to share that more than sixty thousand people had uh, been uh, part of this uh, all online film festival. Uh, now coming up to uh, the webinar series, this is the uh, seventh in the series and more than 3,500 filmmakers, film buffs and film students around the globe had participated in it. Today, as you know, the chapter is ethics and modality in environment and wildlife filmmaking. And we had uh, wonderful panelists, some of the most renowned uh, name in the f uh, field of conservation and environment and wildlife filmmaking and uh, yes, uh, the film festival. Uh, we uh, we have uh, Ms. P. N. Vasanti uh, with us. Uh, Ma'am is an active advocate for more accountable media, and she leads CMS Vatavaran, that is Asia's largest international film festival and forum on environment and wildlife. Uh, she specializes in strategy development, designing, researching, evaluating, communication initiatives, and development programs. She has a PhD in media studies from Jawaharlal Nehru University and has double master's degree in applied psychology from Jamia Media Islamia and management from FMS Delhi University. Uh, thank you, Vasanti, ma'am, uh, for joining with us. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, with us Mr. Ajay and Mr. Vijay Bedi. Uh, the Academy Emmy Award nominated Ajay and Vijay Bedi have worked as a wildlife filmmakers and photographers for over 20 years, uh, starting young, they are the third generation of wildlife filmmakers and photographers. Uh, they are the youngest Asian to have won Green Oscar for their film and recently won three national awards for the Indian, uh, Indian's first natural history film on Amphibian of India, uh, which are given by the president of India. Uh, their films are broadcasted on many international channels and pictures are published in various magazines. Uh, we have Kavita Bahal and Nandan Saxena sir with us. They are independent filmmakers and media trainers with over 40 films of, in their uh, credit. After several years of working as a journalist, they quit their job to follow their dreams and set up top court films. They, uh, uh, the short uh, period of time, they had made uh, uh, wonderful films on uh, culture, ecology, livelihood development, and human rights. And uh, I'm, I'm honored to say that they have been honored three times with the National, Fil National Award uh, on in, for the filmmaking. Uh, thank you, uh, Kavita sir, uh, Kavita ma'am, and Nandan sir for participating with us. And last but not the least, we have Arthi Srivastava with us. Uh, and um, Arthi is a National Award winning Indian documentary filmmaker and Asia 21 leader. 
uh, she has been a jury member on various film festivals, including the International Film Festival of Goa, and is currently engaged in producing and directing a multi-year feature length documentary project on the water crisis in India. And she will be also moderating the session. Thank so thank you, Aarti, uh, for accepting our invitation. And uh, now the platform is yours. Thank you, Sabisachi, for the introduction. Uh, we are discussing about uh, ethics and morality when it comes to wildlife uh, uh, filmmaking, wildlife and uh, environmental filmmaking. So I'll start with uh, Vijay sir as to, uh, I would like to understand what is exact, what do you mean by uh, when we talk about ethical filmmaking? So what is your version of, uh, you know, what is ethical filmmaking? Could you please uh, help us understand a little about that? Sure, Ati. First of all, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, CMS Vatavar and to have such a platform to discuss such a thing. Uh, these topics are normally uh, not discussed very often and it is the most important um, subject we need to talk about in many webinars to come. Uh, well, uh, talking about the uh, ethics, first we need to know responsibilities. We personally think all the natural history films should be made responsible. The question is how many people are responsible? Uh, well, if I want to take uh, back in, uh, in early 1950s, you know, when first leading the production house made a film on le uh, lemmings. And these were the creatures, it was a mega film uh, received very well internationally. And there was a sequence where these uh, lemmings are uh, diving uh, into a valley and creating a mass suicide. So most and uh, giving a, a false perception, basically. And a lot of people like that sequence because they thought it's, they happened naturally. But uh, later they discovered that it was not natural and uh, the set was created and uh, some of the mountain was also uh, not real. So uh, uh, so this is just one example that it's been going on from decade. See, animal harassment and cruelty has been prevailing in wildlife filmmaking for decades. The harassment can be just one form of everything getting too close to the wild animals or disturbing their habitat. But uh, now because of there's so much rush in the content delivery, but producers are looking wildlife kingdom just in basis of sex, blood, and making them furious. A um, lot of presenters like to ha manhandle the animals, try to show them in a very bad light. Um, but uh, ultimately, it's about, um, you know, sh um, talking about the animal and giving the right perspective, working as a filmmaker, your responsibility is to show their behavior. Obviously, the other thing which is very, very common and most important thing is not to disturb them, keeping the habitat intact, which is very, very crucial. So in, in 1980s, um, there was a very well-known English filmmaker and a scholar, uh, Jeffrey Boswell, came up with actually a code of conduct of ethics, uh, seeing how the filmmaking should be done properly. And, uh, and he realized that filmmakers, when they're making films, uh, uh, was very uh, disturbing to the animal's behavior. Um, that obviously bring, and obviously that kind of a, some kind of a Bible for all the peoples to follow the, uh, the, the natural filmmaking afterwards. Because earlier years, you know, there was a lot of exploration. Not many people know what was tiger about, how does they hunt, uh, crocodiles take their babies on the water, how they hatch them. So it was a lot of error at the same time, but the naturalist industry was evolving during that time. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so these rules were actually very important uh, to have some kind of a benchmark. Coming uh, now to your question of ethics, uh, which is very, very important. Uh, you want me to answer right now, or you want to come to the other guests and then come back to me? No, you, you can go ahead and answer. Okay. I will ask them other questions. Sure. So the, uh, there are many such rules. So a lot of individuals um, in the present time and some organization have worked on some uh, ethics, uh, but I like to give few examples. Like, for example, if I tell you, uh, ensure that your subjects are more not cause any physical harm, anxiety, or lesser reproductive success by your activities. <clears throat> it it's nice to read like that, but in in principle, and I want to talk about few examples in India how Indian wildlife filmmakers are uh, getting it completely wrong as naturalist film and uh, trying to break boundaries and um, uh, breaking the, all the ethics. So first, uh, for example, it's a very common, uh, uh, it's uh, about the sound, uh, which is very, very a normal thing. I was watching this film with my, my daughter and she saw a scene of two tigers uh, taking, playing in the water. And she said, Papa, it's too far short and this beautiful sound. 
and I'm like, yeah. And she said, how did they capture the sound? And I was like, huh? I said, you know, like any filmmaker, they would create a sound uh, in a studio or if it is high budget film, they will try to take from the library and try to reenact it. And uh, and then in the in my mind, I was thinking it's like a cheating. Uh, it's it's a very thin line of being ethical as a documentary filmmaker in naturalistic film to cheat a sound. Um, coming to the second is entomology, where you actually try to impose these human feelings on animals, uh, which is often done uh, uh, by many filmmakers for, uh, by creating, for example, uh, a sound uh, or telling. Uh, uh, there was an interesting example which I want to talk about is there was a bird in Lane Forest. This was not Indian, but uh, internationally, where they're trying to mimic the sound of, of Michael Jackson with that particular bird, where it moves so fast and swift to show how that bird can do a break dance. So it gives a fall uh, a perspective of that particular in behavior of a bird. Again, it's a fin fine line whether you want to cross that line as an ethical filmmaker to even venture and try to portray a subject in a way. The third is more serious, uh, which is, uh, uh, is is very, very serious. Uh, it's, it's beating, which is giving uh, food to to get a close up. Uh, um, I want to, uh, I came across few filmmakers talking, uh, getting a shot of uh, Gharial underwater, um, very close to the show. And they baited the, the Gharial to get a dead fish and to get a shot. Yes, the shot looks incredibly nice. It's it's mind blowing when you see that those kind of images. But as an ethic filmmaker, you want to do that or not? That's a personal choice and accepted internationally or not. Same with goes with Snow Leopard. It's very diff difficult cat to film. And um, uh, recently, I came across another filmmaker who wanted to endorse with the camera brand, and he was in so much pressure that he wants to make a film. And to get a close-up of Snow Leopard, uh, there was a bait to get a get a picture of a Snow Leopard. Again, it's a very fine line where you change the behavior, you disturb or you do this kind of, which is totally no, no, no ethics in terms of ethics. Uh, third is uh, uh, the the animal calls, uh, which is you meet a lot of wildlife photographers and filmmakers both, uh, where they play the calls of birds and uh, wolves to attract them, to get them, get their shots, which is again, very, very disturbing to hear. I know all these sounds uh, very, very disturbing and it is, and somebody needs to talk about them. And I think so this is the right platform to, to talk about these things. The another example is, which is horrifying uh, when it comes to wildlife filmmaking is disturbing the nest. <clears throat> There's a lot of filmmakers who have filmed the, the nesting behaviors and then they destroy the nest so other filmmakers can't film it. Can you imagine that? How the mentality of filmmaker works in India. Uh, but luckily, a lot of people are stepping in. Uh, Bittu Sahidal, who's been a really a uh, voice for conservation in India, has said that he won't publish pictures of uh, nesting birds in India. And also, I recently saw on a Facebook group, a birding group said, oh, no pictures for the breeding birds during the monsoon season. And I was really impressed that somebody's going out of the box and taking that kind of initiative. And I think so these, these initiatives have to be more more forthcoming and more uh, progressive. Um, one of the other, which is the most common, uh, uh, not in India, but across the globe is demonizing the animal, try to show humans are more superior than animals, and which is totally uh, unacceptable and unethical, uh, from naming the tiger's man eating to uh, giving their name as a beast which gives false perspective for the people that animals are crazy and they are not there on this planet uh, and we have the rights to do it. So as a filmmaker um, and in voiceover, you need to be very careful with what you say and how you depict. The other two quick points are uh, the trapping camera, tra tra trapping footages. It's a very sensitive subject. Uh, you need to have a permission mm -hmm. to even, even schedule one. See, research is something different. I'm talking about filmmaking. Uh, when you put a camera, it's a different ball game, and you need to be more responsible when you even venture out in such territory. And there have been incidents where uh, somebody has planted a camera in one of the rarest cats, and the dad and they wanted to get a shot inside, and the cat never returned back. And this is the information from the field which I get, uh, which is very disturbing. And last, uh, which example I want to go, there's a lot of expensive films now. And suddenly, there's a lot of money coming into India, and these expensive money is spent on glorifying films on naturalistic, which is not good. 
uh, ultimately the film should be having a strong conservation message and if you put so much money in just glorifying the natural history which is not the real sense uh, doesn't make sense at all um uh, so uh, i just like to say that the film has the power to change the people pers- perspective uh, to do so it's very important to ha- behave ethically and originally possibly to get the facts right uh, doing in their limits to do ethically and uh, try to get them better so when you talk about a lot of money coming in uh, for uh, you know for natural history films i've seen the kind of equipments they use and uh, you know heavy equipments which are going inside the forest with drones and everything which does not really allow all of this i don't know who gives them this kind of permission and why are these kind of films i mean why are so much equipments required and needed to do films like these now and uh, it's happening everywhere and that's what i'm getting news about uh, on a daily basis but uh, we'll speak about uh, you know uh, brutality against animals okay how it happens in india like when it comes to elephants in kerala or you know various other places and everything so as a filmmaker mm-hmm. i would like to uh, ask uh, ajay sir uh, this Uh, that you know as a film maker would you film something that is happening to the animals right in front of you would you capture that on camera or no so as a film maker what is your stand uh, this is for mr acha baby is he i is he there oh, actually yeah. if you not there let me say yeah <laughs> he's he's there uh, acha can you unmute your uh, i un Ajay, you are. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Yes. So, so very good evening to everybody uh, and uh, respected uh, uh, Nandan ji and uh, others. Uh, uh, very quickly, just to answer your question, I mean, yes, as a wildlife filmmaker, you know, we have great responsibility towards our audience. And uh, something happening in wildlife in front of us, uh, we have to record that. yes the point comes in that whether we should interfere in that activity or not that's very important sometimes there is a big challenge a lot of people say you know if you see a small deer being killed by a tiger or a small other animal which is being predated by other animals you should you know try to stop it you know the only point here is that we should not interfere in wildlife at all you know uh, shooting is one part of it yes we can film it but the responsibility comes later on when we edit the films and we present the final film that what is to be included in the film or not for example certain uh, as we say mentioned the close ups of close up shots of blood or you know the brutality you know something which can disturb uh, the the viewers you know so that is very important we should you know avoid that that's unethical you know so it's very very difficult to say that and it's a very thin line uh where you know one has a responsibility to show the things in a way which is very presentable convey a message that this is the behavior which you know the animal does and at the same time keeping all the ethics and uh, responsibilities towards the viewers and towards the animal as well just to add on uh, the your previous question about vijay has elaborated a lot on the ethics yes, yes. but uh, as uh, Uh, on the ethical point is that that one should basically understand the basic meaning of being ethical or you know ethical issues in wildlife film making and according to me i have simplified into very basic three points you know uh, as i covered first point is like the audience uh, whosoever are watching the films you know especially wildlife films should not be misled uh, of watching those films you know and second definitely cruelty uh to the animals you know the animals should not be harassed or disturbed during the filming you know and uh when i say that it could be as simple as you know uh going close to the animals and taking close ups you know because once you approach the animal in a very different way the animal can get disturbed and can totally react differently so a very important uh, point here is that one should understand uh, the animal behavior and he should be well versed as a wildlife filmmaker about his behavior about his surroundings and how he reacts to different uh, environment and the third most important uh, is that uh, any film as a wildlife filmmaker uh, it should have a message of conservation you know 
there are many films as we just said big budget films you know who which which must have been very well shot very spectacular you know as you said with drones and all that but they don't uh, convey a message of conservation for example i will say uh, if you talk about killing of dolphins or talk about uh, tiger conservation in any film and there is no conservation towards them your film is not successful uh, i will just quote a small example of a recent film uh, the secret life of frogs which is one of the first film on amphibians i will yes. say it, it it was a very great challenge for us to you know uh, do that film initially because uh, we were uh, mm-hmm. thinking that we won't be able to film much of a behavior on those animals but when we started doing a film and uh, ultimately when it get the recognition as a, a, a nationally you know at the national award you know people really appreciated the kind of work we showed you know we talked about its conservation we talked about limitations in wildlife uh, conservation towards uh, frogs so that way it's very important that one should always have that conservation angle towards your films uh, yes yes i have seen the uh, film uh, on uh, the secret life of frogs and it was beautifully shot of i, I think you spent around 2 3 years doing that if i'm not mistaken Yes, yes. Yes, and uh, it was very beautifully captured. So, uh, just to uh, you know, uh, uh, when you're filming uh, uh, films for three three years, so uh, is it because that you just want these uh, creatures to have their own space and time, and you're not trying to enter their territory or not trying to disturb them? Is that the reason why wildlife films are shot for a very long period of time sure sure ati i think so coming back to the ethics again uh, yes that was the main reason that this film took so long and secondly obviously the funds but the whole idea as a filmmaker we draw a line where we should not cross the ethics and responsibility as a wildlife filmmaker uh, which uh, we are glad to be born in a wildlife filmmaker and learn from a grandfather and father over many years Uh, which is, for example, we never wanted to have a fancy shot of a slow motion of a frog jumping from a tree, of a tree frog. Uh, it, it's I know ha- what it happens to take that kind of a shot, for example, or or uh, or disturbing their habitat or making a mini studio where you have a micro chip um, with a telescope lens where you zo- you can do a macro dolly effect on a frog crawling, for example. So. of course those shots are the dream shots and you would like to have it and most of the amazing documentary uh, award winning documentaries do have those kind of shot but as an ethical uh, uh, conduct uh, both brothers we decided not to have those kind of effect and and the other thing because we are still young we are still learning you know my hair may have turned gray but uh, you know every day is a new day in a nationalist film and you want to learn as many new things from other people but for the uh, for amphibians there was nothing there for us to follow because we were trying to see other people work to get motivated get more inspiration to put that kind of a film uh, or the concept in indian films to do this film because it was first film it was a lot of experiment lot of failures uh the major problem was tracking the animals uh as soon as we used to turn the lights on the animal used to disturb so we evolved over the years again uh, after many few years we managed to get a red light we, we used to film in red light and try to uh film the track the animals in a red light which is let in save invasive and less disturbing to the creature and then finally turning our led lights so which is much cooler uh, because animal the amphibians normally bleed from their skin so we need to be more sensitive and the whole idea is if we disturb these animals we won't get what we wanted to do and then and finally eventually we learn making mistakes and try to get what we wanted and uh, the the lesson of that is uh, this is not a purely entertainment film uh, the frog film of us it's is a very strong and you're proud to say that it's a conservation film and has a very strong conservation message across the streams and and the major thing uh, which uh, which we are very proud of is that the thing which we have filmed after so many years that we are working with the scientists we are working with the policy makers and what we could actually film we are trying to write a scientific paper out of it which i wouldn't have even uh, dreamt to uh, to do that and it's still in peer review which i can't talk much about it i hope it gets approved and uh, it comes out soon but the whole idea is how to work with the scientists um, and make a film with the proper ethics involved in it 
Yes. Uh, when you talk about research papers and, uh, you know, when we are talking about responsible filmmaking here, uh, the thing is that when you gave the example of lemmings and, uh, you know, they are committing mass suicide by falling off the cliff, that actually beca became a part of, uh, you know, curriculum. And it was uh, put in a lot of textbooks for n number of years that this is the behavior and this is what exactly happens. And, you know, it was not true. And this is what the children read for a very long uh, period of time. Uh, and that's where I really feel that responsible filmmaking cause should come into place and not give a certain kind of narrative and not create something uh, just for the sake of filming because this film I believe was done by Disney if I'm not mistaken it was done by Disney yes. and which was very irresponsible to do something like this yes. and uh, so uh, when you are doing films uh, when you have to do uh, certain films wherein uh, others don't have access to, when you're talking about the behavior pattern, when, to when you're talking about n number of things, you have to be really responsible because people are watching it and it's going to go down in the history and you're recording something. So what do you have to say uh, about this? Like, you know, how responsible you should be because a lot of people are, uh, you know, trying to uh, infer from your film and they are trying to take a lot of there's going to be a lot of takeaways from your film which will be made a part of curriculum and a, a lot of research papers and everything so what do you think about a responsible filmmaking when it comes to this it's a very basic bottom line uh, there's a huge sort of sets of uh, rules and ethics online and people can find it but the basic and the most foremost is uh, to be honest to your work uh, there's no shortcuts um, and today's generation is quick work, quick money, which doesn't work in wilder films uh, or matter of our nature films or even matter of documentary films where you're dealing with people because you need to immerse yourself and try to tell their story rather than imposing your story on top of them. There's no scripts there. You need to follow, spend time and see where the story leads you to. <clears throat> and as, and of, of course, respect the wildlife, respect the nature and uh, and be honest, it's not about getting the best shot possible or the best storyline. It's about being out there and try to be honest to your work, basically. Okay. Very quickly um, so to add, I mean, uh, as Vizir rightly said, it's not about the money shot, you know. A lot of people go for the money shot, you know. We have to have that shot, you know. That will make a film. But, you know, the idea is not that, you know. Uh, the film uh, should, have, should be, uh, a more important, a balanced film, you know. It should give a viewers a very balanced view about your animal, about the behavior, about its conservation efforts, and about the dangers of what animals uh, are facing. You know? And we as human, if we are destroying that wildlife uh, habitat, that should be also covered in that. I will just share an example where you said, you know, if uh, when uh, filmmakers cover something unique, you know, uh, this example is from one of our first films uh, called The Policing Langur on the behavior where, you know, uh, especially in Delhi, where uh, the, the people used uh, the bigger langur as called the langurs to scare away the rhesus macaques. So a lot of people initially had that, you know, uh, idea that, oh, they are using the langurs to scare the rhesus, you know, wow, that's unique, you know. And as a filmmaker, you know, we did our research, you know, we filmed all the sequence and uh, we also talked to the primatologist on that. And, uh, Ultimately, you know, we and our scientists used to discuss and they, they said, you know, when we go to the jungles, we find uh, these animals like the langur and rhesus are living together, you know. They are there and, and they are not exactly scared. So the basic principle, she explained that, yes, one is a bigger animal and the other is a smaller animal. So ultimately, a bigger, a smaller animal will automatically be scared uh, from a larger animal. And uh, the science was that. Plus, adding to that, you know, there was this langur wala who had this langur uh, on a leash uh, uh, used to shout. So it's a double effect of a man shouting and a bigger langur running towards these smaller rhesus monkeys uh, that created that impact. But yes, talking about ethics, it is unethical to, you know, keep uh, animals as pets, you know, especially when they come into the wildlife acts of uh, uh, animals. So that is one of the examples, yes, uh, which came to my mind. Okay, uh, I would like to uh, speak to Kavita, ma'am, about uh, you know about your films, and uh, you've been doing a lot of films with people who are trying to protect wildlife and forest, and uh, you're trying to uh, give them voice. And would like to understand 
uh, what are the ethics you know involved in uh, involved when you are talking to these uh, people who are the keepers of the forest the natural uh, history that we have and everything so uh, what are the ethics that you have to you know come across while filming these kind of films kavita ma'am Uh, you are mute. Uh... Yes. Yeah. Is it okay now? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So thank you, Arti. And uh, we've been making films for about twenty-five years now, and most of our films are intimate portraits of people. So one thing that we have realized is. that a good film can only be made when you make it collaboratively with the people you are working with till you don't take off your goggles that you've taken with you from the city and put them pack them and keep them somewhere and forget about them you actually cannot make the kind of films which are truthful which are honest which truly represent your protagonist what you are trying to show because ultimately each film is an experience you are trying to take your viewers through a journey it's just it's not that you are making a film for your own self you are making it because you want to share it so when we talk of ethics and morality the truthfulness of representation is very important and as far as possible the filmmaker should keep his or her own personal view with his himself or herself and we should try to listen to give space to the people who we are making the film on so this one thing is very important and the kind of intimate portraits we do what was very important for us was that how could we tell them best and the way we uh, the way we devised for ourselves was to place ourselves in the narrative of our films so you as a viewer are not only getting a window into lives which you never seen before you are also getting a window into the filmmakers who are we where we come from what is our politics everything is very clear through our films and the kind of responses we've got we've understood it really works it works very well so in fact if i can share my screen i would like to show you the beginning of a film cotton for my shroud which is on the suicides of the cotton farmers in india we filmed it at vidarbh in maharashtra and uh, let me see if i can show you the i'll just share the screen yeah ये तो ऑडियो देना पड़ेगा इसका ऑडियो नहीं लगा 2006 और बोलो 10 years Since we started on our own, Kavita and me, quitting our jobs as journalists, we wanted to work on issues of water, the slow poisoning of our land, and the trampling upon of human rights. Our travel across the country gave us a window into rural India. With time, the journey became a metaphor. our bubble of a city centric existence was constantly being punctured by the rough edges of reality if india lives in its villages then what kind of life is it in the decade from 1991 to 2001 nearly 8 million cultivators quit farming from 1997 Till 
more than 200,000 farmers have ended their lives. And this is official data. unabated suicides of the cotton farmers broke the stasis. in cotton formal shroud because it is a very intense 75 minute film it is not just an environmental film we also go and delve into the policy of how india's first genetically modified crop was introduced in india and how its failure has impacted upon the farmers who got into it without really knowing why and where they were going in for it so we placed ourselves there right in the beginning the point I'm trying to make is that each filmmaker, there is no one way of making films. Each one of us have to find our own ways. So to the young filmmakers, I would say, find your own ways. It's okay to follow somebody whose work you like, but ultimately it's your journey. Yeah. Nandan, would you like to add to it? Nandan ji, aapke liye ek sawal hai. बेसिकली जब आप ये फिल्में करते हैं फार्मर सुसाइड के ऊपर हो गया या आई कैन नॉट गिव यू माय फॉरेस्ट जब इन लोगों से आप मिलते हैं जब इन लोगों के इमोशंस आप कैप्चर करते हैं तो कितना आप एज अ फिल्म मेकर आप कैसे उनके इमोशंस को पोर्ट्रे कर सकते हैं इजीली क्योंकि बहुत टाइम होता है कि दे ब्रेक डाउन एंड दे स्टार्ट क्राइंग एंड यू नो देर आर विजुअल्स आई एम श्योर आपके फार्मर्स सुसाइड फिल्म में कुछ विजुअल्स आप डालना चाहते होंगे या यू नो वेरियस अदर आई मीन वेरियस अदर थिंग्स जो आप करना चाहते हैं तो वो इमोशंस आप कैसे कैप्चर करते हैं फिल्म में और क्या एक लाइन है जो आप क्रॉस नहीं करना चाहते आप बड़ा बने ही तब तक ये बहुत अच्छा कमेंट आया था कहीं से बीच में <laughs> अच्छा आरती बहुत सुंदर प्रश्न है और इसमें बहुत सुंदर कहानी है जो कविता सुनाती है उसको मैं नहीं छेड़ रहा क्योंकि उसकी कहानी नहीं खराब करूंगा कॉटन फॉर्म श्राउड का आपने जिक्र किया तो ये कहानी हमारे उन किसानों की कहानी है जो हमें वस्त्र पूर्ण रखते हैं जो हमें अन्न पूर्ण रखते हैं और जिन्हें हमारी नीतियों ने एक जेनोसाइड की कगार पे खड़ा कर दिया है जिसको एक पेड मीडिया सुइसाइड कह के के दबाता रखता है ढांके रखता है अब भाई दस लोग मर जाएं तो हम सुइसाइड कहेंगे सौ लोग भी अपनी जान ले सकते हैं मैं मान सकता हूं सुइसाइड है चलो जब तीन लाख फार्मर्स सरकारी आंकड़ों के हिसाब से सोलह साल में अपनी जान ले लें हर 36 मिनट में एक फार्मर अपनी खुदकुशी कर रहा हो तो क्या हम उसको सुइसाइड कहें कि हम उसको मान लें कि हाँ हिटलर के जेनोसाइड से बड़ा जेनोसाइड यहाँ पर हमारे देश में हो रहा है हमारी सरकार उसमें इन्वॉल्व है बड़े बड़े मल्टीनेशनल कॉरपोरेशन उसमें इन्वॉल्व हैं तो ये जेनोसाइड नरसंहार हो रहा है तो जब ये हिंदू में हम लोग ने आर्टिकल साइना साहब बड़ी शिद्दत के साथ लिख रहे थे और बाकी सब मीडिया में थोड़ा थोड़ा आता था किसी अंदर के पृष्ठ में छुपा हुआ हिंदू में मुख पृष्ठ पे भी आता था तो हमने कहा यार ये तो बहुत विचलित करने वाली स्थिति है हृदय विदारक स्थिति है अब इसके बाद अगर फिल्मकार यहाँ बैठा रहे तो फिर वो उसको तो मतलब कमाल की बात है तो हम सत्तू पानी लेके और बांध के पहुँच गए विदर्भ जब हम कूदे उस रण क्षेत्र में जो हमारी कर्मभूमि है आ, हम तैयार नहीं थे क्योंकि दिल्ली सेंट्रिक जो हमारी सोच है उसको धीरे धीरे चिप ऑफ करते करते नॉर्थ ईस्ट में दो साल हम दोनों ने काम किया तो उससे काफी कुछ चिप ऑफ हो गई थी 
हमें समझ में आ गई थी मुख्य धारा कुछ नहीं होती है ये जो अन्य धाराएं जिनको हम कहते हैं यही संस्कृति है हमारी यही हमारा समाज है और जब हम उसमें पहुंच गए और गहरे पानी में कूद गए और जब आपके आसपास आप मोर भी जा रहे हैं आप उस किसान के घर भी जा रहे हैं जहां उसकी शव यात्रा निकाली जानी है और जिस तरह से रुदाली भी है क्रंदन भी है और उसके घर वाले मूल प्रश्न ये है उनका कि कल सुबह उठ के हम क्या खाएंगे आदिवासी किसानों की बात है और उनके घर में कुछ भी नहीं है और जो एकमात्र आय उपज जिसके होती है जो एक एकमात्र साधन था आय का उसने खुदकुशी कर ली है घर में बच्ची है घर में एक बच्चा है बीवी है और वृद्ध माता पिता है और वृद्ध माता पिता उस वक्त मतलब बिल्कुल डेज्ड हैं और वो पूछ रहे हैं कि अब कल सुबह उठ के हम क्या खाएं हमारा प्रश्न ये है इस वक्त हमें तो जब ऐसा हृदय झंझोड़ने वाला जब माहौल होता है तो उस वक्त कैमरा अगर मेरे हाथ में है और मेरी आंख नम हो जाए तो मेरा फोकस सॉफ्ट हो जाएगा मेरे दिल की धड़कन बढ़ जाए तो मेरे हाथ कापेंगे तो उस वक्त संयम रख के सांस रोक के काम करना बहुत जरूरी होता है क्योंकि कविता तो दूर खड़ी रो रही होती है मतलब इतना अजीब परिस्थितियां हैं कि उसके बाद आप कैसे काबू रखो अपने ऊपर और आपकी जर्नलिज्म की ट्रेनिंग वेनिंग सब धरी की धरी रह जाती है आप अंतर आत्मा तक जगजोर देता है ये माहौल आपको और उस वक्त आप ये एक इंसान है आप अपने ये सब वस्त्र आभूषण और ये गले का गमछा और कैमरा जैकेट भूल के हाथ का कैमरा भूल के आप एक इंसान हैं जो उसके दुख में शरीक हैं बस आपका काम है ये कहानी दूसरों तक पहुंचाना इसलिए आपके हाथ में कैमरा है आप सिर्फ निमित्त मात्र हैं माध्यम है तो आप उस वक्त सिर्फ एक ये छोटी सी मूल मंत्र लेके चलते हैं कि मेरा काम इसको यथावत लोगों तक पहुँचाने का है वो काम मुझे ऑनेस्टली करना है तो अगर आपके प्रश्न का इसमें उत्तर मिला हो बहुत सुंदर उत्तर मिला है और आपने कहा कि एक कहानी है जो कविता से मैं छेड़ना नहीं चाहूंगा तो मैं वो कहानी पर कविता मैम से बात करना चाहूंगी कि वो कौन सी कहानी है नंदन सर जो बात कर रहे हैं साउंड हाँ जहाँ तक कार्ति मुझे समझ आ रहा है नंदन शायद कैंडल्स इन द विंड की बात कर रहे हैं ये पंजाब की आ, उन महिला फार्मर्स की कहानी है जिनके हस्बैंड सुइसाइड कर चुके हैं मैंने बहुत सोच समझ के विडोस का शब्द यूज करना बंद कर दिया क्योंकि तो जो एक छवि आती है मन में वो बहुत ही बेचारी औरतों की आती है क्योंकि सच बात यही है कि बहुत ही कम विधवा औरतें हैं जिनको सम्मान के बाद उनके पति के जाने के बाद घर वाले संभाल के सहेज के रखते हैं ज्यादातर औरतें बहुत बुरी हाल में ही जीती हैं हमने कई फिल्में बनाई हैं और इसको मैं बहुत शर्म के साथ कहना चाहती हूँ कि ये बात सच है तो ये उन औरतों की कहानी है तो हम लोग जब पंजाब गए ये फिल्म बनी कॉटन वाली फिल्म के बाद क्योंकि कॉटन बनाते हुए ये लग रहा था कि औरतों की बात तो हुई नहीं हम सारा ही टाइम किसानों की बात और पॉलिसी की बात करते रह गए लेकिन बच गई कौन संभालने के लिए जाने वाला चला गया कर्ज तो नहीं गया कर्ज वही का वही है उसे कौन उतारेगा बच्चे उतारेंगे जब वो बड़े होंगे और औरत उतारेंगी तो इसलिए फिर जब दोबारा रिसर्च करना शुरू किया तो समझ आया कि अरे हमारा जो मोस्ट प्रॉस्पर स्टेट है पंजाब वहां तक पहुंच चुकी हैं आत्महत्याएं तो कैंडल्स इन द विंड वहीं पे बेस की गई और कैंडल्स इन द विंड इज अ मेटाफर फॉर दिस ब्रेव विमेन हु आर कैरिंग ऑन इन स्पाइट ऑफ द ट्रेजेडी इन देयर लाइफ्स सो अब उसमें ये है अब आप जहां पे आप रिप्रेजेंटेशन की बात करते हैं आप एथिक्स और मोरालिटी की बात करते हैं मुझे अपना वो जिससे मैं इन औरतों को बेचार बेचारियों की तरह देखती हूँ मुझे वो चश्मा उतारना पड़ेगा otherwise i cannot be honest to what they are to their resilience to the how bravely they are carrying on with their lives so karam hamare kai teen char protagonist hain main aapko milwati hu karamjeet kaur se 
और उनकी कहानी वो खुद ही सुनाएंगी और आपको समझ आएगा कि उन्होंने क्या झेला और वो कहा खड़ी हैं कहा मुझे वीएलसी नहीं दिख रहा है सो so, हाँ रखा था वीएलसी अच्छा अच्छा हाँ 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 तो मेरे पति जी देखा जी छोटा बच्चा मेरा साल मैं झोने चो कख भी आप कर दी रही हूँ सवेरे हो दम नहीं हार मालक दे टाकरे धमका चालू रखा हम बच्चे मेरे बबरू हुए बच्चों के सर से भी नहीं पिता वाले टेंशन सो so, एक चीज जिस पे हम थोड़ी देर में भी आ सकते हैं आरती उस पर मैं ये कहना चाहूंगी कि बहुत लोग पूछते हैं और मैं बताना चाहूंगी कि जब फिल्म मेकर्स इस तरह की फिल्में बनाते हैं तो उन पे क्या गुजरती है एक कहानी उनकी भी है पर इस पर तो मैं बाद में आऊंगी ओके वसंती मैम कमिंग टू यू वी हर्ड सो मेनी फिल्म मेकर्स टॉक अबाउट यू नो द डिलेमास व्हेन दे मेक फिल्म्स एनवायरमेंटल एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ फिल्म्स एथिकली एंड मॉरली एंड यू नो सो एज अ फेस्टिवल ऑर्गेनाइजर व्हेन यू कम अक्रॉस thousands of films and we when we are watching and when you have to make the crucial decisions of certain films so what is it that you uh, what is i mean could you please give us few examples of why you drop certain films and why you pick certain films keeping morality and ethics in mind thanks sarthi thank you to all the panelists i mean they've given some fantastic uh, feedback and uh, points that are not discussed often on such platforms so i'm glad that they are making this effort to do that um uh, i wanted to actually highlight to you that in 2000 2001 when we started cms patavaran the idea was to give a platform and to encourage uh, young filmmakers uh, to engage with environmental issues and wildlife concerns uh, we knew that what we're talking about is not just an issue but it comes with a lot of uh, emotions some politics behind it and um 
there were could be policy implications so we had to be very uh, ethical and responsible about it so uh, whenever we started the festival itself we were very conscious about it and therefore every festival has evolved over the i'm actually very um, proud to say that uh, we've actually set some benchmarks not just for filmmaking in india and environmental and uh, wildlife but we've also given platforms uh, i mean the, uh, all the filmmakers on this particular panel have all won for uh, the cms vatavaran awards and i'm very happy to share that uh, ajay and vijay vidhi got best of festival for their films on uh, frog last year and it was a fantastic film and i'm it's a platform and from there just not just the festival we showcase the film but all over it goes it travels to different places it goes to different schools it it goes to different festivals so we we make sure that the film gets so much exposure and even the filmmaker gets an experience of being able to share the film on different platforms so that i'm very proud of but having said that every festival it was like filmmakers like nandan and kavita or ajay vijay and before them naresh ji and who have received the prithvi ratna award second prithvi ratna award i would say is that uh, they have given us inputs about how we can improve ourselves and we've taken that and that that i think one important quality for being responsible or morally ethical is being open to criticism and open to feedback and that uh, learning from them every festival has been a learning for us so we finished 10 festivals competitive festivals and more than 55 traveling festivals all over india and abroad so obviously we have you know we're doing something right that we're making sure that it continues over such a long period have now coming to the issue about why and how one very important issue is of course being transparent you asked a question about how do we select films and that's a very important um, uh, exercise for us it's not just like one day or two days it goes on for almost six months after we get a film we not only do a two stage peer review within our organization within our team then we have a nomination jury of about 35 odd people from all over india which includes media students of um, uh, uh, filmmakers filmmakers film critics and also subject experts who actually sit together and watch all the shortlisted films and then we have an award jury who actually again of very eminent people who are again 12 15 people who again watch in groups and discuss so the the important issue is that It's, there is transparency in the whole process and there is multi multi stakeholders who are watching each and every film and discussing about its uh, the crucial elements like um the ajay, ajay mentioned about the technicalities about it or what kavita mentioned about is this ethically right or not should we be showing somebody with that lens uh, these are issues that are often discussed and only then the criteria but galtiyan hoti hai humse nahi hoti hai aisa nahi ki nahi hui hai last mein hui hai but we have learned from them and over the over the years rectified for example another i would like to say an ethical dilemma that we had was hame funding to milti nahi hai jo milti hai it comes with a rider so should we take it like for example one funder actually asked me aap hamare uh, program ko criticize karenge to hum aapko paise kyu de so things like that i mean they are not looking at the issue they are looking at their own vested interest so should we be going another very important uh, funding that was coming was from uh, our, our, alcoholic or uh, organization or tobacco or mining uh, should we be accepting such funds to do a festival on environment and these are very ethical questions that we 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 we, we come across and of course uh, fr uh, film fraternity and friends have uh, we've always gone back to them for questions and for helping us sorting out uh, uh, these dilemmas and, and and i think over the years we found um, few few fundamental uh, uh, i i would say principles that really help us in making sure that the film is not violating any ethical and moral and i like to share that with you first and foremost is is it accurate i mean that's very very crucial and as they said accuracy at what cost is of course very valid especially for wildlife filmmakers uh, but accurate to hona chahiye kuch purana dikha ke abhi ka bol rahe hain wo ekdam galat hai to wo ek cross check karna zaruri hai do they do any harm so sure, obviously do not harm that that philosophy has to be very important is it harming anybody or any any uh, species or any actions in in the way and find, uh, thirdly um, protect the vulnerable and and isme bacche bhi aate hain ya chahe suicide victims hote hain wo aate hain ya koi wildlife hai jo unki voice nahi hai aur hum hum unki voice banke ek kuch dikhane ki koshish kar rahe hain and finally i think most important is we have to 
honor the uh, audience trust you know what that means is you have to respect the viewer with the full integrity of a uh, 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 issue or of a uh, filmmaker's credibility and that's very very important so i think these four points at least we make sure that we are covering in in, in the whole process and where we at least these can help us in giving some direction but i'm glad vijit also talked about some guidelines and perhaps maybe in the next webinar or next festival that we will maybe highlight those guidelines and create something very similar for indian filmmakers to maybe follow especially for wildlife uh, film making which is so so important and we often ignore it because there's nobody to actually uh, check us or say anything to us and we get away with everything so i think these are the few fundamental uh, four points that i think are very important uh, which we follow and of course transparency and being responsible and sincere to all whatever you do whether it's uh, selecting a film or call uh, you know uh, using a visual or uh, uh, organizing an event or just conducting uh, any business that's important in every field but especially in this particular sector i think you have to be extra more extra step extra conscious on that ground so and that that's why we feel these platforms are important okay ma'am i have one more question for you like it's a concern uh, with like all mostly lot of filmmakers that i'm talking to they're trying to film a lot of uh, documentaries on environmental issues in india right now and the way things are going is uh, is something like when we send our films to uh, sense board for certification and everything and they're not getting through that process and we are not being given a sense of uh, certificate so uh, what do filmmakers do at that point and when they are trying to raise the most important pressing issues and uh, you know when they are trying to talk about the issues that are uh, you know happening uh, at, at a very large scale and they are trying to film it but not getting sensor certificate which which does not allow them to send it to a lot of festivals and screen That's the right. film so what do they do at this time at that at this point then so uh, it's mandatory in india at least that uh, you yeah. cannot show a film uh, on a larger public forum uh, without a sensor certification so therefore uh, even we are uh, as a festival uh, bound by those laws uh, we can't do anything about it having said that um, we've done 3 minute and 1 minute competitions which are done mostly by students uh, not many professionals come on to that board but having um, done that festival we make sure that we showcase those films so we use social media and youtube to showcase those films and actually you'll be surprised we're getting very good response as sabhi uh, sabhi sachi explained in the beginning our online festivals and um, which do not need a sense board by the way and uh, we are able to showcase all these films there and we got some fantastic uh, audience uh, viewership beyond a festival which is very surprising for us and uh, pleasantly very nice so there are different platforms where we can showcase such films also you don't always need a sense of it only when you are physically holding a large uh, event then you need one okay so uh, we'll move on to questions uh, uh, is there uh, anybody would like to add? yes yes vijay sir yeah so i just want to conclude uh, at least uh, the bit of ethics here that uh, vasanth ji has already covered which i actually wanted to say that you know uh, it comes back to this one question that whether we should make wildlife films uh, anyway it's very difficult to make in india uh, wildlife film is very important uh, without wildlife films people would have little knowledge about wildlife right? but whether such programs actually promote conservation is still an open debate uh, too many films fail to mention conservation and how even suggest anti conservation message or even sometimes de uh, mining the whole animal concept which is which is very very long way to say so it's very very important in india we should have a code of conduct of ethics uh, which is very very important and um, uh, when when you say that code of conduct where you actually has some kind of formal uh, um, uh, rules where naturalistic film should have some guidance and there's so much talent in india and the way one can start is was vasanth ji just said that you know the the watavaran is one of the biggest wildlife and environment festival in asia and has a huge uh, uh, point in in india to do so so i think so it can start having one other special category where the jury can keep in mind the ethics uh, about uh, how the film is made uh, especially when it comes to indian filmmakers and uh, uh, as of course international and 
um, because there's so much talent in India where they they really want to do documentaries. Unfortunately, there's no platform there, and Mathurin also gave that. So they need this kind of a guidance where people can tell them what's went wrong, and you need to be little responsible while uh, doing uh, such a film. And happy to take any questions. Yeah. <laughs> So just to, uh, sorry, uh, Nandanji, after you probably. No, 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 no. After you, after you. No, no, nothing. I mean, I just would Ajay, like. Ajay, after you. Okay, uh, just to add yeah. regarding the certification of the film. Yes, it's very important uh, that all films should be certified. For example, even wildlife films, when you go and certify your films, they will definitely ask you a letter of permission from a wildlife park or a or a reserve if you are filming in that areas. But yes, if you are filming outside an area or a national park. then a permission may not be required but uh, coming to a point that uh, uh, it's not necessary that a film should have a trp or a have should have millions of people who should view it but uh, a, a environment film or a wildlife film which has small audience and can make a difference in terms of uh, uh, conservation uh, is very important like for example you can take your film and showcase to the decision makers like the politicians or you can a group of scientists can show the films among the scientists and even the young uh, 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 schools or colleges you know that may not require a certification you know, and that can create a big impact of of the same film you know. yes thank you nandan ji kya aap add karna chahenge actually main to badi khalbali machane wali baat kehne wala hu main ye kehne wala hu ki hum log baat kar rahe hain na ethics of morality ki hum ये नहीं सोच रहे हैं कि ये हमारी जो सोच है इसका दायरा कुछ लोगों ने काला पट्टा जैसे घोड़े को पहनाया होता है ना ब्लिंकर्स इसको कहते हैं अंग्रेजी में तो हमें आ, हमारी भाषा की शब्दावली को हाईजैक किया गया है हमारे सोचने की एबिलिटी को हाईजैक किया गया है ताकि हम पॉलिटिकली सेफ जो कंस्ट्रक्ट हैं हम सिर्फ उसमें उलझे और इतना उलझने के लिए हमें फ्रीडम दी गई है ताकि हमें लगे हाँ हाँ अरे वाह नंदन जी आज बहुत अच्छा काम किया है अरे वाह बेरी साहब क्या बात है छा गए यार तुम दोनों भी छा गए बस होता क्या है कि हम पॉलिटिक्स और स्ट्रक्चरल इश्यूज की बात इस देश में करना हमने छोड़ दिया है हम बात करते हैं एथिक्स की मोरालिटी की मोरालिटी बड़ा अजीब नाजुक सा कंस्ट्रक्ट है और आपकी अलग है मेरी अलग है लेकिन पॉलिटिक्स और स्ट्रक्चरल इशूज किसी बड़े कॉरपोरेशन को अफेक्ट करता है किसी बड़ी पार्टी को अफेक्ट करता है सारी बड़ी पार्टी इसको अफेक्ट करता है इसलिए उसके बारे में बात ना 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 ये नहीं हो सकता बॉस तो इसमें हमें ज़रूरत ये है कि हम पहले तो अपनी सोच पे जो मकड़ जाल है सोच का वेस्टर्न सोच का जो कहती है कि एंथ्रोपोसेंट्रिक यूनिवर्स है मतलब हम जो आदमी है बाईपीडल एनिमल जो है वो क्वाड्रापीड्स और बाकी एरिकनेड्स और एंथ्रोपोड्स बाकी सारे के सारे जितनी चीज़ें हैं वो आसपास हमारे हमारे लिए ही तो बनी हैं वो सजावट की चीज़ें हैं जैसे कि ये बोतल है ये पानी पीने के लिए बनी है ये मोबाइल है ये रेडिएशन से मेरा दिमाग खराब करने के लिए बना है इस तरह की बहुत सारी चीज़ें शेर है चीता है भालू है घोड़ा है ये सब हमारे मनोरंजन के लिए बनी है असल में तो यूनिवर्स की एक आद एक मात्र क्रिएशन है इंसान जो चोला धारण किया हुआ हमने हम इस सोच को कब चैलेंज करेंगे एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट आए उन्होंने पहले ह्यूमन सोसाइटी को स्टडी किया वो भी स्पेसिमेंट्स की तरह स्टडी करते थे अच्छा अच्छा तुम ऐसे दिखते हो काली चमड़ी वाले हो तुम गेहूए हो हाँ तुम गोरे हो तुम ठीक है तुम्हारा रंग ठीक है तो सारे कैमरा के सेंसर वाले जो है गोरी चमड़ी के लिए कैमरे का स्किन टोन बैलेंस करके रखते हैं अजय विजय को मालूम है मैं क्या बोल रहा हूँ तो बड़ी कमाल की बात है उसी तरह से एनवायरनमेंट की हमारी जो परिभाषाएं हैं उनमें जो शाब्दिक अर्थ हैं वो रूढ़ हो चुके हैं हमारे अंदर हमारी धमनियों में खून की रक्त शिराओं में बह रहे हैं हम उनको क्वेश्चन करना इसलिए भूल गए हैं हम क्यों नहीं बात करते उस तक... that is what i am saying that is what i am saying that is the requirement we are not uh, import it's not important to talk about morality or ethics it's important to talk about politics and structural issues absolutely so agree with you ke festival ke zariye ya aapke festival ke zariye log uh, filme logon tak pahuncha pa rahe hain jaise hamari cotton pomash shroud hai jisko aap log ne bakhoobi dikhaya 
या फॉरेस्ट वाली फिल्म को आप हवाई तक लेके गए आई सी एम की कॉन्फ्रेंस तक तो ये काम बहुत जरूरी है इसमें मैन एनिमल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट फॉर एग्जांपल स्ट्रक्चरल इश्यूज से जुड़ा हुआ है हम जब ये मान के चलते हैं कि ये सारा का सारा नेचुरल जो परिवेश है जो जीव जगत है वनस्पति जगत है वो सब हमारी बपौती है मिल्कियत है और दुनिया तो बिग बैंग से शुरू हुई थी एक बिग बैंग से खत्म हो जाएगी उससे पहले जल्दी जल्दी सारी चीज का दोहन कर लो सब खत्म कर दो तेल है सब निकाल लो कोयला है कम्बक्त उसको भी निकाल लो और पानी है नदियों अरे इनको तो डैम करने के लिए भगवान ने बनाया था ये नदियां बिना बात के बह रही हैं सब नदियों को जोड़ दिया जाए सबका पानी मिल जाएगा बहुत अच्छी बात होगी वाह वाह हरि भजन करेंगे अरे मूर्खों भैया ये सब चीजें प्रकृति ने जैसी बनाई हैं वैसे छोड़ दोगे जैसी तुमको मिली थी तुम्हारे बाबा आदम के जमाने से वैसी शाश्वत काल से चल रही थी अब लेकिन तुम अपने बच्चों के लिए सौ साल में बिगाड़ के चले जाओगे मतलब कमाल है यार ये कहाँ की बुद्धि है इसको तो मतलब कमाल का विकृत मानसिकता है हम लोगों की आजकल और जिसको हम सोचते हैं कि बहुत इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रोग्रेस हो गई हम लोग कितने आगे बढ़ गए 5G का माहौल बन गया है सब कुछ तो ये सारी चीजें अब बेशक अब वाइल्ड लाइफ फिल्मिंग की जैसे विजय ने बहुत सुंदर बात शुरुआत जो की आगाज बहुत सुंदर था जिसमें ही हैड रेज अ वेरी वेरी पर्टिनेंट क्वेश्चन अबाउट हाउ वी रिप्रेजेंट बिकॉज इट्स अ पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेशन और वसंती ने जो बोला कि ये मूक हैं तो वाइल्ड लाइफ तो जवाब नहीं दे सकती ना कि तुमने हमारा गलत रिप्रेजेंटेशन किया तो उनको आप ड्रोन से भी फिल्मा लेते हैं आप उसके साथ एनिमल ट्रैप्स भी यूज करेंगे बेट के लिए कुछ भी डालेंगे और कछुए की पीठ पे आप या कुत्ते की पीठ पे आप एक कैमरा भी लगा देंगे एक्शन कैम वो ऐसे 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 करके घुसता जाएगा आप लव मेकिंग भी उनका बाकायदा फिल्म करेंगे उनका नेस्ट भी तोड़ेंगे ये बहुत सुंदर बातें हैं इसके साथ साथ अगर हम ये देखें कि भाई इनके जो रिप्रेजेंटेशन हम कैसे दिखा रहे हैं तो कुछ चैनल्स हैं जो दिखा रहे हैं एनिमल प्लैनेट है डिस्कवरी है नेट जियो है बीबीसी हिस्ट्री है बहुत सारे लोग हैं हमारे देश के भी चंद चैनल्स हैं जो थोड़ा थोड़ा दिखाते हैं कंजूस लोग हैं तो क्या उसमें जो फिल्म मेकिंग वो लोग सेंक्शन कर रहे हैं उनका स्टाफ बना रहा है वो कोई भी रूल्स रेगुलेशन मोरलिटी एथिक्स में उनका कोई विश्वास है उनकी नौकरी टिकी है सेक्सी शॉट्स पे सेक्सी क्या है इस देश में बिट्टू साइकिल बहुत अच्छी बात करते हैं ना कि टाइगर सेक्सी है इसलिए टाइगर पोस्टर बॉय है हमारे कंजर्वेशन का आप बीज की क्यों नहीं बात करते हैं भाई आप छोटी छोटी चीजों की बात क्यों नहीं करते हैं जो इकोसिस्टम को जिंदा रखते हैं उन माइक्रोब्स की बात क्यों नहीं करते हैं जो सॉयल बैक्टीरियम जिसमें अगर हम मिट्टी में खेलते होते तो हम बी की दवाई नहीं फाँक रहे होते दवाई नहीं है ड्रग्स हैं सब तो वो नहीं फाँकने की जरूरत पड़ती तो हमें प्रकृति से विमुख करने का जो तंत्र है उससे हम ये बाकी चीजें भुगत रहे हैं बेशक वो कोरोना का की विषम परिस्थिति है जिसकी वजह से आपके इतने खूबसूरत आयोजन आजकल नेट पे चल रहे हैं या वो जो इस वक्त इकोनॉमिक्स हमारी खत्म हुई है क्योंकि इकोनॉमिक्स जैसे ही इकोलॉजी से मुख्तलिफ हो जाएगी अलग हो जाएगी वैसे ही ना इकोनॉमी बचेगी ना इकोलॉजी बचेगी क्योंकि इकोलॉजी लोगोस का कैसे संभालना है मतलब उसको इकोलॉजी को इकोसिस्टम को उसी की समझ तो इकोनॉमिक्स में इस्तेमाल होती है आप नियंत्रित किसको करेंगे जो चीज आप समझते नहीं उसको आप नियंत्रित कैसे करेंगे तो इकोनॉमिस्ट भरे पड़े हैं वही देश चला रहे हैं इकोलॉजी वो समझते नहीं अरे भाई हर शाख पे उल्लू बैठा है अंजाम में गुलिस्ता क्या होगा thank you thank you nandan ji for highlighting the structural issues and the politics behind which is always there even in organizing a festival we face that so i'm a, i'm a, i'm a, i'm quite assured that you guys also face the same thing while shooting and ca- capturing even one image on in the field so thanks for bringing those up uh, arti over to you let's take some questions okay. okay we'll take some questions i have few questions here uh, the first one is uh, from bharti who wants to know about uh, pocket foldable equipments like you know when you are venturing into forest areas which are like the small equipments you can take which are easily manageable and also how do you ensure safety uh, for the cinematographer and the filmmaker so uh, these are the questions bharti has to ask ha uh, uh, arthi ji i think so this is very uh, basic and very important question people normally ask us or uh, 
फर्स्ट इम्प्रेशन ये आता है कि हमें कौन सा कैमरा खरीदना वाइल्ड लाइफ या डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज बनाने के लिए बट आई थिंक सो इट्स अदर वे अराउंड मेरे ख्याल से इट्स मैं बहुत दफा कहता हूँ इट्स नॉट द कैमरा विच मेक्स द पिक्चर इज पर्सन बिहाइंड इट एंड इट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आप कोई इक्विपमेंट इतना फैंसी लेने की जरूरत नहीं और फिर सोचे कि मैं कब जाऊँगा इट्स दी अदर वे अराउंड आपको कोई अगर सब्जेक्ट अच्छा लगता है जैसे नंदन जी ने इतनी अच्छी अच्छी फिल्में बनाई है और कोई भी कोई ऐसा विषय आपको लगता है जो आप डिस्टर्बिंग आपकी बेशक कॉलोनी में हो सकता है इट कुड बी अ रिवर फ्लोइंग बिहाइंड योर हाउस और इट कुड बी अ रेगुलर ह्यूमन प्रॉब्लम एंड इफ आपको ऐसा कोई भी है यू कैन स्टार्ट फिल्मिंग फ्रॉम योर फोन इट सेल्फ बिकॉज आज की डेट में इवन फोन क्वालिटी भी बहुत अच्छी है बट अगर आप थोड़े प्रोफेशनल हैं और आप चाहते हैं कि आपको फिल्मों से पैसा बनाना है विच इज जो नॉर्मली होता नहीं है डॉक्यूमेंट्री में बट अगर आपका सोच वो है और वो हॉबी अगर प्रस्यूट करनी है तो आई वुड से कि आप छोटा सा डी एस एल आर आज कल डी एस एल आर मिररलेस कैमरा ऑल्सो गुड क्वालिटी बट बिफोर डूइंग दैट नेटफ्लिक्स डिस्कवरी या नेशनल और फेक ऑल दीज चैनल उनके एक गाइडलाइंस है विच इक्विपमेंट दे क्वालिफाइड टू शूट दैम गो थ्रू इट एंड बाय अ बेसिक कैमरा किट एंड ट्राई टू मेक अ फिल्म आउट ऑफ इट द होल आइडिया इज आई कॉल इट कि हम जो जनरेशन रह रहे हैं वो जनरेशन एक्स है हमें भी डोंट नीड ओ टी टी प्लेटफॉर्म वी डोंट नीड ब्रॉडकास्टर्स टू शो आर फिल्म इफ अगर आपको कॉज पे बताना है कोई कॉज को रेस करना है या जागरूकता जागनी है लोगों के मन में आप एक वीडियो बना के अपना नेट पे डाल के भी उसको काम कर सकते हैं सेकेंडली सेफ्टी के लिए नेचुरल नेचुरल हिस्ट्री में ज़्यादा चॉइसेस नहीं है क्योंकि जब हम जंगल में जाते हैं वहाँ पे कोई भी गन्स या कोई भी आम एलिमिनेशन ले जा नहीं सकते तो मोस्ट सोली यू हैव टू डिपेंड ऑन द फॉरेस्ट गार्ड्स व्हाट दे गिव इट यू एंड द होल आइडिया इज ये मैं एग्जाम्पल सबको बोलता हूँ कि मेकिंग अ फिल्म इज लाइक मेकिंग लाइक स्पेंडिंग टाइम विद योर spending time with uh, like making spending time with your wife like or making a girlfriend if if you go and straight away hold uh, her hand she will slap you so you respect wildlife please uh, janwar jangli janwar unka isliye bolna jata hai ki wo janwar hai to agar aapko janwaron pe film banani hai landscape ki film banani hai to respect karenge and respect is the only thing in the world which you give more you get more to exactly. aap unki unke ghar mein hai to unko saath respect ki Yeah, just to add very quickly uh, on the safety point, you know, it's very important that uh, one should not think about their safety first. You know, if you are thinking about the animal safety first, uh, you know, you are automatically safe because uh, uh, adding to that, you know, one should really understand the animal behavior because, uh, for example, if you are talking about a tiger or any other animal, if you know that animal uh, behavior and you know what distance to maintain, uh, you will definitely be very very careful about doing that. For example, if you are, uh, if you know uh, behavior of bears, you will be very careful about that. So it's the other way around. You know, you have to be careful and respectful about the animals, and automatically you will be uh, safe anyways. Okay. And the most important, you should not interfere in in in, in any situation uh, of forgetting that, uh, as I said, the money shot. You know, and it's not important that you should have all the gadgets in the world to get that shot. You know. uh just highlighting because in our frog film you know we we really uh, you know try to minimize our uh, you know perspective uh, in terms of filming yes aerial uh, photography is good you know to give a different perspective but yes uh keeping safe distance is very important for wild animals okay uh this is a question from murli thara uh, where in this question is for ajay sir ajay uh, i uh, i guess the real question is whether we should film a crime or torture of wildlife by humans or should we do something to prevent it okay and uh, uh, i would like to add one more thing here uh, when it happens on a mass scale uh, like you know uh, like uh, what happens to elephants in kerala on a mass scale or various other animals across uh, the world i mean like china or india or various other subcontinent places when we talk about animals what should we do in that case are we supposed to film it as it is or we have some morality or some ethics involved when you are doing something like that actually ajay already talked about it so i just butt in and try to speak on his behalf okay It's okay really... all right yes vijay ji you can go ahead and add enough once vijay finish just in case okay sure <laughs> so uh, basically uh, it's 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 a very very um, important question so whether a filmmaker should intervene a process uh, which as a filmmaker personally i think that we should not the whole idea is 
camera is a very powerful tool, which I keep saying, it can change the people's mind, change the people's perspective. And the power of imagery is so powerful that it can be shown across the world, which they are not seen it. So I'm saying if a morality is happening on any animal or something, as a filmmaker, if I have a camera, I would rather capture it and tell the world and try to showcase the world that this is happening. For example, I want to uh, just talk quick about example about the same thing that uh, it's it's a very important as a filmmaker not to show the pretty side. You know, uh, we don't want to show the glamour of nature, natural history anymore. It used to be done 50 years back when, when people didn't know about tigers and we didn't know about um, what was nature all about. I think so this time has changed. We need to show some difficult pictures so people see that and ask questions to us. Why is this happening? why there is a dead snake lying on a road, why this deer died. And if you are able to generate the curiosity and to see a difficult image and try to encourage people to ask questions, I think so that is the power of your thing. So uh, I would, uh, to summarize, I, I won't intervene. I would rather capture and try to take those footage and try to make a bigger impression and try to stop a mine, for example, if there's illegal mine, if there's the elephant, I try to talk about elephant problem and capturing issues in India. Ajay, on to you. Yes, very rightly said. I mean, uh, I'll just add a very short point, you know, filming is not a problem uh, or shooting, uh, but very important, uh, the, the point here is how you use it, you know. Uh, as a wildlife filmmakers, uh, it's unethical to sensitize, uh, you know, sensitize the, you know, the whole thing, you know. Uh, if you can keep it simple, uh, keep it uh, real and impactful, then that's 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 justified, you know. Uh, that's it, probably. Kavita, ma'am, would you like to add something? Is it okay now? Yes. Can you hear me? So yeah, I totally uh, agree with what uh, Vijay is saying that a film can really change minds. It's a very powerful tool. Visuals can help people look at life in a way they've never seen it before. And yes, definitely it has to be done with responsibility. And I was reading the questions and somebody was asking that, you know, isn't it uh, infringement of somebody's privacy when you go and start filming them. It definitely is if you do without permissions, as at least I can say of the human subjects, Vijay and Ajay can fill up on the wildlife. And obviously, I mean, look, once you place a tripod somewhere, you are altering the reality in any case. Yes. Because you are trying to show what you want people to see. But the point is, if you make friends, if you people place their trust in you, believe me, after a point of forget that you are there with the camera. We've had such intimate portraits of people where they've given us so much, much more than we ever expected as filmmakers. Just because ultimately we were just talking heart to heart. So as I said, earlier, it's your journey. It is a filmmaker's journey. Take command of your journey and move. Yeah. Okay. So we'll take a final takeaways from our panelists. And after that, we, we shall conclude. So uh, is there anything, uh, Nandan sir, kya aap kuch add karna chahenge? Uh, aapke last kuch points? Haan, mujhko ye lagta hai ki agar hum apni uh, environment ki soch और परिभाषाएं बदलेंगे तो मौलिक बदलाव आएगा हमारे पर्यावरण में क्यों क्योंकि ये पर्यावरण वरण जो है ये हमारा जो अंदर का माइक्रोकॉस्म है उसको रिफ्लेक्ट करता है अंदर से हम अपना ग्रीड लोभ अगर छोड़ दें संयम पे वापस आएं तो हम थोड़ा अपने ना धुरी पे टिक जाएंगे वापस अपना हमारा पेंडुलम जो इधर से उधर बहुत हो गया है उसको वापस स्थिर सेंटर ले आएंगे अगर तो हम अपने आसपास सब चीजों को ये नहीं सोचेंगे कि ये सब मेरे भूख के लिए मेरे खाने के लिए बनी है लाओ 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 मैं सब खा जाऊंगा ये नहीं सोचेंगे पहले हमारे देश में जो समाज था उसमें गांव का समाज जो था किसी की जमीन अपनी नहीं थी 
आप हमारे देश के रिकॉर्ड्स में जाइए तो प्राइवेट प्रॉपर्टी का कॉन्सेप्ट नहीं था राइट right? अब इसको आप पाश्चात्य सभ्यता जब हमारे अतिक्रमण हुआ अंग्रेज आए यहाँ पर और उन्होंने गजटियर में लिखना शुरू किया तो उनको कर चाहिए था अब कर का पहले भी सिस्टम था राजा को और मुखिया को कर जाता था लेकिन वो हिस्से में जाता था जैसे लुहार को जाएगा जैसे कुम्हार को जाएगा वैसे उससे पहले मुखिया को जाएगा या राजा को जाएगा ये बात अंग्रेज के समझ में नहीं आई उसने कहा अच्छा खेत किसका है तो उसने कहा खेत तो समूह का है समूह में कौन है समूह में गांव वाले सभी लोग हैं जो लोग खेती नहीं कर रहे हैं जो लोग कृषक नहीं है वो भी उस समूह का हिस्सा थे तो तब हमारी सोच समग्र थी हम गाय के लिए जगह छोड़ते थे पानी पिएगी आके उसी तरह से हम चिड़िया के लिए भी एक पात्र रखते थे कि चिड़िया को चुग्गा चाहिए चिड़िया को पानी चाहिए अब वो हमारी सोच टूट गई है हम वर्टिकल साइलोज में लंबी लंबी तेईस मंजिली एंटिला खड़ी करके और उसमें हम जिंदा रहना चाहते हैं एयर कंडीशनर लगा के चारों तरफ क्यों भाई तो ये सोच हमें तोड़नी है अपने वर्टिकल साइलोज और आईलैंड से बाहर आना है और मान समझ में ये जरूरी है कि भाई आप एक प्राणी हैं इतने बड़े कायनात में सिर्फ आप ही नहीं हैं इसलिए अब सिर्फ मैं ही नहीं हूँ बाकी लोगों से भी बात कर लो यार अच्छा जी विजय जी वुड यू लाइक टू ऐड समथिंग आई हैव ऑलरेडी सेड बट आई वुड लाइक टू से लास्टली दैट यू नो दैट वाइल्ड लाइफ फिल्म मेकिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अनफॉर्चुनेटली इन इंडिया हमारे पास वैसी डॉक्यूमेंट्री के नाम से इतना प्लेटफॉर्म नहीं है और थोड़े बहुत ही um uh, actually films comes out from this region but the talent is huge uh, there's so much people who wants to do so many documentaries in india it's just mind blowing but the whole idea is to do it in a proper way and uh, the, unfortunately there's no code of conduct so we need a proper code of conduct in place and uh, somebody needs to take it very seriously and and whoever is not able to follow uh, the basic code of conduct should be actually been fined or strictly looked at into it um and the way forward is festival like uh, seen with vatavaran who has some amazing footfall and which is one of the biggest film festival in asia and has a huge footprint in india and gave give actually platform like filmmaker like me i'm proud to say that in 2004 when i started my career it was one of the first launching pad for us to uh, even recognize some kind of a film which we had done in local uh, television so so the whole idea is to talk about ethics more and more and responsibility as a filmmaker and uh, not just go out and uh, get your dream story or dream uh, uh, shots but to be more little bit resp- uh, responsible and have privacy all around that's all ajay ji mute ajay mute ajay unmute yes yes uh, uh, i was just seeing there's one question about just the sound uh, design i think so i was just seeing so very quickly just to answer that i mean uh, yes as wildlife films you know there are there uh, there are times when one needs to do a lot of sound designing and kind of you know put a lot of sounds from uh, either the you know stock or water sounds because there are a lot of camera sounds people shouting so there is no harm in doing that uh, because uh, one needs to keep in mind that what you are trying to uh, again uh, give an audience the perspective you know for example if you are adding a sound effect to a bird flying you know and if it is about the speed or you know the power of the uh, bird flying and if the sound enhance, en- enhances that effect or experience for the audience so it is justified uh, and even for example if you are in a forest and you are adding sounds from that area you know it's not that you know you are talking about uh, corbett national park or other uh, and you are using a sound effect from south africa which is totally wrong you know so that should not be there Uh, yes and just uh, adding to conclude my thing is basically as everybody said you know films are very powerful tool and we as filmmakers uh, should be very responsible and be- should be very careful in using that medium because we are taking that medium to mass and uh, we are uh, uh, showing that films to children to old people to young people and to policy pe- uh, people who are doing policy makers you know So we have to be very careful in that, and we have to be true to it. You know, so if we are true, the audience realizes it, and you know, uh, our our message is conveyed, and conservation starts there. Yeah. 
thank you so much it has been such a wonderful experience talking to all of you all uh, thank you so much everyone uh, sabhi over to you yeah thank you aarti uh, kuch bahut kathin sawal puche gaye aur kuch bahut chubti hui se uttar aaye so it's always uh, good to ask difficult question and to uh, come up with the very uh, difficult answers uh, but before concluding it um, one information i want to uh, share that uh, you will find a feedback form link in the chat so uh, kindly uh, fill the form and send us within 30 minutes after uh, the webinar so that we can be able to send you the certificate uh, thank you uh, ajay and vijay ji for uh, letting us know Uh, what to do and where to stop in the uh, wildlife filmmaking, and 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 uh, uh, it's it's really uh, um, eye-opening uh, information which uh, we came to know today. Hamisha ki tarah Nandan sir, Kavita ji, आप आप लोग बहुत ही चुपता हुआ और बहुत ही जिसको कहें कि हृदय को झकझोर देने वाला सिनेरियो अपनी फिल्मों में भी प्रस्तुत करते हैं और वो ही उसी तरह का सवाल भी आपने हमको दिया जो कि मेरे ख्याल से वेबिनार के बाद हम लोग इसके बारे में सोचेंगे क्योंकि ये सचमुच ये सोचने वाली बात है कि हम ब्रह्मांड की धूली नहीं है हर चीज हमारे उपभोग के लिए नहीं बनाई गई है हम उसी प्रकृति का एक हिस्सा है तो ये बहुत अच्छा एक थॉट हम लोगों को देने के लिए कि हम क्या देके जाएंगे और क्या हम भी सब कुछ उपयोग करेंगे या उपभोग करेंगे थैंक यू वसंती मैम फॉर लेटिंग अस नो द प्रोसेस वी डू वाइल सेलेक्टिंग द फिल्म फॉर द फिल्म फेस्टिवल एक चीज़ मैं जरूर बताना चाहूँगा कि यस वी वी डू नीड Uh, film certificate for screen and film but if you don't have certificate while submitting the film to us like every time we we do have certain films which are not able to get the certificate but they had been selected by the jury members they are nominated so uh, b- uh, by the law we send the list to uh, the ministry of information and broadcasting or hum apne festival ke liye uske certificate le lete hain और वो फिल्में दिखाते हैं तो अगर आपके पास सर्टिफिकेट नहीं है तो आप बिल्कुल चिंता नहीं करें आपकी बहुत अच्छी फिल्म है हम सर्टिफिकेट लेंगे फेस्टिवल के लिए और हम वो फेस्टिवल में दिखाएंगे सो थैंक यू वंस अगेन एंड 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 थैंक यू आरती इट्स इट हैज बीन प्लेजर वर्किंग विथ यू यू हैव सो काइंड एनफ टू मॉडरेट सम ऑफ आवर वेरी talked about uh, webinars uh, in these uh, uh, covid uh, era uh, so thank you very much aarti again i want to add i wanted to just mm-hmm. thank um, from on my behalf all the yeah, panelists uh, it's thank actually you. very mind uh, uh, quite a interesting discussion and a lot of takeaways for us as a as a festival what to do next as sabhi rightly pointed out and uh, thank everybody including kavita sabhi you forgot to thank kavita but uh, thank you all for being part of this and let's continue the dialogue it doesn't end here obviously yeah. it doesn't end here yeah, we yeah. need to continue and hopefully we'll we'll make a crack at the festival where the dialogue continues and perhaps come up with some guidelines where people will know where to go to get uh, to do at least the basics of it if not the uh, evolved version of it so thank you once again and i like to thank my cms uh, vatavaran team also i think sabhi uh, uh thanks to arti of course now she's part of vatavaran team in, in the way she has conducted all the webinars till now uh thanks to sabhi and thanks to suraj anand kavita and others in my team who have been doing all these online forums and with the help of them they will be able to bring it together this will continue you can see this on facebook you can see this on youtube so this this dialogue continues and thank you all participants please send in your feedback not just on the, on the webinar today but on the issue discussed so with that thank you and good evening bye yeah. thank you so much it's an honor to be here thank you so much yeah thank you and please yeah
and please do not forget to send us the feedback form uh, in uh, in 30 minutes so that we can be able to send you the certificate thank you everyone have a great nice day